الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد. So as we all know that we are here for a very important task, and that is the aspect of tazkiyah. Tazkiyah is to purify yourself from the internal diseases that each and every single one of us have. Um, each and every single one of us, we have been created uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the nafs that we hold. And uh, this nafs that Allah wa ta'ala has given us, that is the battle, one battle we fight. And the other battle we fight is of the shaitan, of the devil. So at all times, the human, he is in a battle with either his nafs or either his shaitan, the devil that he is. So how do we purify ourselves? How do we rectify ourselves? So this is a workshop for that, mashallah. You see, in this day and age, um, and around you on social media you see, and we see it in other places as well, in other platforms and other masajids, that a lot of these people, they hold programs and different, different, you know, uh, uh, events. But very rarely you would find that people are holding this event of tazkiyah and the purification of the soul. Very, very rare. Right? You can look around and you can even search it up. You won't find any masjid like that. Very rarely you would find, right? Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very easy for us that in our community, in our society, in the place where we are living, Alhamdulillah, we have a person who is qualified, who is dedicated, who's de who has dedicated his entire life for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he is, he can help us achieve that goal. He can help us and guide us to achieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that purified heart, right? As the ayah uh, Mulana Fahd had recited in the beginning where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very beautifully says that on the day of Qiyamah, we work for money, right? We work for a good house, we work for a job, we work for... Well, we try so hard for everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ Right? That day is going to come and it's going to come for sure. Right? Whether we like it, we don't like it, I'm happy, I'm not happy, I'm going to die one day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when that day of Qiyamah occurs and happens, that day your wealth is not going to help you, neither your kids, nothing is going to help you. Are you going to go for your, after your kids, ask them, Beta, give me one good deed. Your son is going to look at you like you're crazy. Right? You're going to go after your daughter, Beta, give me one good deed. You just lend me one good deed, I need to go into Jannah. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ Nothing will help you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what? Something that can help you is, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ If you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound and a purified heart, that is something that can help you in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the goal behind this workshop is that how I can achieve that sound and purified heart and how each and every single one of us sitting here can achieve that sound and purified heart. Right? A person once came to Hassan Basir rahmatullahi and Hassan Basir rahmatullahi was a very great giant. He came to Hassan Basir rahmatullahi and he said, you know, Shaykh, I come to your majlis and I sit in your lectures and uh, he said, Shaykh, I just, uh, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm not affected. He said, I come to your majlis, I come to your gathering and your speeches, mashallah, but to be honest, I am not affected. Right? As if my heart is asleep. He told Hassan Basri rahmatullahi as if my heart is asleep. So I come to your gathering and your majlis, I don't achieve anything, I don't really get anywhere, it doesn't really inspire me, nothing happens. As if my heart is asleep. So Hassan Basri rahmatullahi said, no. He said, that is not the case. He said, rather say your heart is dead. Because if a heart is asleep, it can be woken up. It can be brought back to life. If a heart is asleep, it can be brought back to life. You can wake him up, wake up. But if a heart is dead, then that's it, you can't do anything. So Hassan Basri rahmatullahi told him, no, rather your heart is dead. So unfortunately, unfortunately, the case for some of us is such that we've achieved that level, that where our heart has gotten to that level, where now it's completely dead, nothing affects us. Hence why we find Ramadan, it comes and goes, it doesn't affect us. We sit in these purified majalis and these gatherings and with the awliya, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing happens. We come with the same heart, we leave with the same heart, right? So that is why we need to realize that my heart is in that state. And how can I achieve that? How can the, 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 the kalam and the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter into my heart? How can that happen? How can I achieve those levels? 
I have to work for that and I need somebody who can take me there and Alhamdulillah we have that Alhamdulillah in this day and age we are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have someone like that so that's why this workshop don't take it lightly and inshallah this is going to be something that is going to be done every single month so we have to mark it on our calendars and for the women of course them as well it's for everyone as Mulana Taseen was reciting the ayah in the first juz Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim Ismail alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam both of them when they're constructing the Kaaba they're building the Kaaba and their dua is what to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim rasulam minhum yatlu alayhim ayatik wa yu'allimuhum al kitaba wal hikmata wa yuzakkihim Ya Allah send amongst them a prophet and he is the last prophet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whose job is what four things Rasulam minhum yatlu alayhim ayatik recite the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yu'allimuhum al kitab teach them the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach them wisdom and wa yuzakkihim to purify them to purify them you can have all the knowledge of the world you can have all the knowledge of the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but as long as your heart is not purified you won't get anywhere and I won't get anywhere so that is why it is very 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 important that all the internal diseases we have and each and every single one of us were battling with something for some of us may be lying for some of us may be cheating for some of us may be looking at haram speaking of haram listening to haram each and every single one of us were dealing with different battles how can we overcome that this is the gathering for it this is the gathering for it that you have your shaykh you have that person who can guide you to it for the sahaba radiallahu anhu was rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was very easy for them they would come to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya nabi allah i did this i lied the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would tell them what to do sahaba would come a sahabia a a woman a sahabia she comes to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she says ya nabi allah i've committed adultery i've committed zina so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said okay he he, he ignored it she comes again to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Nabi Allah, I committed adultery, what should I do? The Prophet ﷺ ignored it. The Prophet ﷺ was waiting for her that she may second doubt herself and she may just leave the gathering. Then she comes again to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Nabi Allah, I've committed this action, what should I do? I need something to do. Right? For them it was easy, the Prophet ﷺ was right there. So the Prophet ﷺ told her, okay, you know what, since you've committed the adultery, she was pregnant because of that. And the Prophet ﷺ told her that wait off until your child is born and then you come to me. When the child was born, she came to the Prophet ﷺ again. Say, Ya Nabi Allah, what do I do? I had, commit, I had committed adultery nine months ago. The Prophet ﷺ said, feed the child now. Feed the child. And when you are feeding the child, make sure he is able, you can wean him off as well. Wean him off from your milk as well. So she does that. And then she comes back to the Prophet, which is about two years, two and a half years. She weans him off. She comes back again to the gathering of the Prophet ﷺ. Ya Nabi Allah, what should I do, right? How can I purify myself? How can I rectify myself? And this is the... This is the shiddah that we were speaking of, right? This is the, the josh that we need, the fire within us. That if you are doing something haram, you come back to your shaykh right away that how can I overcome it? Like you don't just sleep on it. You know, a lot of us, we do sins and we just sleep on it. We just cover it up, okay, as if nothing happened. No, you come back to your shaykh, you come back to that individual, ask him, please guide me, I've committed this. What do I do? Where do I go? You know, how can I get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so she comes back again Ya Nabi Allah I weaned him off I had fed him two and a half years I weaned him off Ya Nabi Allah the Prophet ﷺ said okay he told his companions to do the 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 the, uh, uh, the punishment for a person who commits adultery and Khalid radiallahu anhu Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu was one of those individuals who was stoning her as well so when he stoned her he hit her head and in the narration it comes some of the blood it came and it splashed on the the, the, the face of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. So Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu, you know, he hesitated and he abused her verbally. He said, some few th he, he said a few things verbally which weren't good. So the Prophet ﷺ overheard. And the Prophet ﷺ said, what? Something very amazing. The Prophet ﷺ said, oh Khalid, don't say that. Don't say that. Wallahi, she has done, I, the Prophet ﷺ said in the narration, I swear by the one in whose hand my life lies. She has done such a tawbah, if it was to be split amongst the entire Medina, Allah would accept their tawbah. So we need that fire, we need that josh, that we come, whenever we do anything wrong, we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek the help of our shaykh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the ability that we truly take uh, benefit from this workshop that is held here inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan.